I'd like to bring two scriptures to your attention and then two little incidents to back up this principle. The two verses are first of all found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3, a verse that the Lord Jesus quotes as a defense against the devil during his temptation in the wilderness. And the phrase that he quoted was, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Notice the words, but every word. But the rest of the verse is interesting. It says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We often think that if we're hungering, if we're needing, if we're lacking something, that God somehow is absent from our care. And we ask him, to compensate for our hunger, for our need, our lack, and then he intervenes and he does something for us, and ah, oh, now that's better. But he says that he also provides starvings. He also humbles us and prepares us to understand something that he wants to teach us. Just as when we hunger, and we desire physical bread to meet the need within. He wants us to have a hunger, not only for the word of God in general, but for every word. To be hungry, to understand every word, every tense, every nuance, every idiom, every word picture, every illustration, every adjective. To, to have such a hunger and to say, I not only want to generally know what this means, I want to chew it up, to masticate it, to meditate on it, and get all the good out of it. So that little phrase, every word. And the Lord Jesus uses this as he battles the devil. And there's another verse found in Proverbs 30, verse 5, which says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in him. So these two ideas are linked together again, that the idea of laying hold of every word of God is the bulwark, is the protection, the shield against the attacks of the enemy. And so how often the enemy will paraphrase scripture and leave out important words. The cults do this all the time. Well, I want to tell you two stories when I misquoted the scripture and what happened. So on one occasion, I was down at Cruising the Coast, which is a huge collection of classic cars that they have in October down on the Mississippi coast, and it's massive. I think there were 12,000 registered and another 12,000 unregistered classic cars of every description there. It's a great place to evangelize. The people are there from maybe eight in the morning till eight at night, sitting watching these thousands of cars crawling by two abreast in both directions and uh, hooting and hollering and calling these drivers to burn some rubber. So, I've been there quite a number of years sharing the gospel. We have a gospel text with our classic car. We have a 55 Oldsmobile. And uh, Brother Glenn Hayes painted a beautiful picture called New Life for Olds. And it shows the old rusty car and then the refurbished car. And the message is simple. It's a simple parable, ruined, rescued, restored, the story of a classic, the story of a life. And the idea that the number one problem with the classic car is rust, Number one problem, the classic car lover rhymes with rust, starts with L, and lust does to us what rust does to a car. A classic car can't restore itself. It needs someone willing to pay the price to make it new 
And that's the story of the gospel. God is willing to pay the price to make us new. And so we have a little Bible verse on the front of the car in the picture. And it's 2 Corinthians 5.13. And uh, this black gentleman came along and I was explaining it to him. <coughs> and when I got to that point in the story, I pointed the reference out and I quoted the scripture. And I said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And he had a very deep voice, a rich voice. And he said, behold, all things have become new. <laughs> I said, you're right, my friend. That's exactly right. When, when God takes a person in ruins and makes them a new creation, so much so that they hardly recognize themselves. They think, was that me? Did I just do that? Did I just say that? I can hardly believe it's me. When that transformation takes place, it should be a moment when everyone around them says, behold, take a look at that. Like this is a miracle before your very eyes. So I missed that little word. And uh, my friend inserted it for me and reminded me that every word of God is pure. There are no extraneous words in the Bible. The other occasion was a much more somber one. I had been encouraging people to follow James' instructions. You know, we sometimes say, well, you know, my life is pretty much scheduled. I have to be at work. I have to do these things. You know, I can't just say, Lord, here's a blank sheet, whatever you want me to do today. And I say, well, yes and no. I think if we could lay hold of this principle that James gives us when he says, don't say we will do this and that, but say if the Lord will, we will do this or that. So I was talking to a businessman in town and he said, I'm not sure I can do what you do, Jabe. You can just sort of leave your day open for the Lord to direct you. It's very exciting, but I'm trying to run a business. And he had a computer business at the time. And I said, well, brother, you know, if, uh, if we could just say when we're talking to people, somebody calls up and needs their computer fixed, say, look, Lord willing, I'll be there uh, Monday morning at eight o'clock. I say, well, what do you mean Lord willing? I say, well, God runs my business. And he can preempt anything I'm doing. He has the final word. So if at 7.30 I meet a homeless man who hasn't eaten in a few days and God lays it on my heart to take this fellow for breakfast and share Christ with him, I call you up and say, listen, uh, something's come up. I'm going to be a little late. I'll get there as soon as I can. That's the idea, that the Lord gets to overwrite my plans if I'm trusting him in this way. Now, I said, some people may get offended and say, I'm not going to use you anymore, but it won't take long until you get the reputation in town that you're God's man and he runs your business. And if you want things done right, you're the man to call. Because you take God seriously, he takes you seriously. When you look after his business, he looks after your business. Well, I told this story and I quoted this verse and afterwards, a brother came to me and said, now, brother, you left the most important part out of the verse. I said, what was that? Well, it says, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. He said, I have terminal cancer. And it's only because the Lord wills that I live today. And if I live tomorrow, it's because the Lord wills. And if not, I'll be going to heaven. And it just, again, reiterated this point that, that when God says something, every word is important. Or as the proverb says, every word is pure, purified. When you purify something, when you, when you put it through the filter or when you put it through the heat, whatever it might be, the idea is that everything extraneous is removed and everything that's left is valuable important. It's what you are after. And so the word of God is like that. It's pure. There's nothing extraneous. There's no dross in the scriptures. And so it's important for us 
And I had to have these two brothers remind me, and probably there are other occasions as well, where we round off something and we need the details because man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word of God is pure. And as a result, when I hold on to that position, when I lay claim to everything God has said, then we read he is a shield to those who put their trust in him. I trust this will be an encouragement to you when you read the scripture, notice the details. Nothing is there. It doesn't need to be there. And we can gain benefit from looking at the details and laying claim to every word in the word of God. Thank you.